Hello, Matt back again. So, um, this is a hobby update on the uh, Futsal miniatures, which I'm going to be using for the Baron's War. And these are my Western Knights, my Western troops. I've got the Byzantines, uh, I previewed those in an earlier video and kind of went through those. And this is the probably, probably two thirds, probably more than that, of the retinue for my uh, Western Knights. So, these are the English Knights. Um, English, French, weren't they around that time, to be honest, still. <laughs> okay. So, I'm um, just going to take you through uh, the Futsal miniatures. And this is really previewing the Futsal miniatures more than anything, not really thinking about the uh, the Baron's War rules as such. So, we've got... Um, what I've decided to do is to divide them up into groups of six. So, I've got 12 archers and 12 spearmen on the uh, right-hand side over here. So... Basically, the footsaw miniatures, they're all in metals. Yep, there's a variety of different um, variety of different poses, so they're quite nice. Okay, I'm quite pleased the way these have come out. Like I said in an earlier video, I, I don't really um, paint metals very often. You know, I think like most of us these days, it's more kind of plastics or resin. Um, but these metals came out really nice, and I quite like the... The kind of shading on them, etc., that that I got. So I'm quite pleased with them. Now, you will notice that they're in um, kind of retinue colours. So I put um, six spearmen and six archers in yellow. Okay, so the archers over here, and I've done six spearmen and six archers in red. Now I know that in the 13th century, 14th century. We didn't really have um, livery. We didn't have retinue colours for the different retinues. That came later, probably around the time of the Wars of the Roses, probably in the Hundred Years' War. But I just thought for the tabletop, I just wanted to kind of give them a unit distinctive colour. So I'm going to basically have six archers, six bowmen, and six spearmen together. Um, plus six knights is kind of a 500-point retinue. And then... Six um, uh, spearmen and six archers in yellow, and um, with another lord, and uh, another six knights is another 500 points. So, putting them both together is they're two small retinues that will join together to become one large retinue. Okay, so at the moment I've just got the commander for the reds. Okay, and I think I'll just for a second. Uh, Let's find his name. No. Okay, so this is the commander for the red for the red retinue. Okay, uh, these are all um, rebel barons. All right. Um, so these two guys, basically the the commander and the bannerman, they will add to a unit of four knights, and that will become a command unit. Okay, in terms of the rules. So the Bannerman gives 12 inch command range. Um, I've re you know, I'm using the figure of the Bannerman um, in the command unit, but you can just represent it with a figure with a non-combatant unit, but he will be a combatant figure within the unit. All right, so the Bannerman and the, the um, commander will probably be the last two to be removed from a unit if it's destroyed, okay? So um, it's almost probably about 800 points worth there. Yeah, if you add these two small retinues together. So we've got the kind of red retinue and the yellow retinue. Add them together, you've probably got close to, and plus two units of um, knights as well. And you've probably got around a 1,000 points, okay? So I've also added a two um, priests as well, a couple of clerics, okay? Again, these foot saw miniatures. All right. So, and what what they what these guys do is basically they enable um, greater morale rolls in the game. Okay, um, and basically they they add to they enable a unit to add to morale. So, I'll also add these to the command unit. So one to the red command unit, one to the yellow command unit. Okay, and uh, yeah, nice shot there. I see one in the yellow command unit, one in the red command unit. 
and that improves the morale of the um, unit. Let me just check that actually. I'll just check what the priest actually does. If we just look in the rules, because I'm kind of just babbling on here a little bit. Let me just check the rules on, on the, on the uh, priest. Yeah. Oh, yeah, priest. Okay. So basically, um, characters like this are upgrades to units. So the bannerman is an upgrade. Okay, so you could just add a add a figure that represents the bannerman because it's an upgrade. Uh, it's a nine point upgrade to a command unit, and a priest is a five point upgrade to a command unit. With the bannerman, I've chosen to make the bannerman a combative figure. Okay, um, but with the priest, this is a non combative figure. So I just add this figure to the unit to represent the priest upgrade. Any warriors within an order range of the command group ignore morale dice for morale checks, which is quite good. So, the morale, the order, the command range for the group is going to be basically twelve inches. Um, okay, uh, because they've got the bannerman, and so they will ignore morale dice for morale checks. So what that means is basically in Baron's War you get a morale dice that you put next to your unit all the way through the game. And that morale dice can get higher and higher and higher. So it can get up to a total of six. And it affects your morale roll. So it you know it's a significant modifier on your morale roll. So the higher your morale dice is, say it's five or six, then the more difficult it is to maintain your morale roll. So what these guys allow you to do is to ignore that modifier, which is pretty good. So if your morale dice is up to like five, and you've got a priest in your group, you completely ignore that morale dice on your morale checks, which is that, that is a good, good use of a, a tactic. And basically, five points, that is really good. So I, if anyone's playing Baron's War, I would definitely suggest adding a priest because they are really, really useful. Because what I found in Baron's War in the kind of playthrough that I've had so far, um, morale is really important. You will find yourself checking for morale quite often. And morale plays a big part. Okay, you can get shocked and broken quite easily um, by failing morale rolls, and and obviously when you need to um, when you need to rally, you need to make another morale roll. So your morale is going to make a big difference. Also, if you want to charge or attack a unit that is further away than the closest unit, you need to make a morale roll to charge that unit to attack that unit. So normally you attack the closest unit. Um, if you want to tap one that's further away, you make a morale roll, okay? Obviously with the modifier of your morale dice. And um, also, morale is important because there are several different abilities throughout the game. Um, things like fear, for example, which means that you sometimes you have to check morale in order to charge certain units. Okay, so some abilities actually affect morale as well. So morale is a massive issue. And probably morale is the big difference in this game between this game and other games. So, you know, I did think when I was playing this, well, why, you know, or when I bought this game, I thought, Baron's War, I thought, well, why aren't, why don't I just play Lion Rampant? But the big difference between Lion Rampant and this is the morale system in Baron's War. That is the big, the big difference, really. Okay. Um, and if you can't get, if you can't, you know, get your morale right, then you're going to be in a, a lot of trouble. Okay, so what I would suggest, anyone who's going to play Baron's War, I would definitely suggest taking priests, okay, in your command units, all right, because they will affect the morale rolls of your um, other units, okay, um, and I would definitely take a bannerman because it extends the um, command range, okay, within your unit to 12 inches, um, usually it's six, yeah, okay, so it doubles the command range of your unit. And if it was me, I would definitely take two command groups. Okay, so I, I, what I've done is I've discovered that playing the game, doing a bit of play testing, six is a good number. Yeah, six in a unit, six archers, um, six spearmen, six knights. Okay, is a good number for a unit. You can keep cohesion. Okay. Keep good cohesion, and also you don't drop down too quickly to the dreaded three, because three is difficult. Because when you start, when you get down to three, any morale check you make, if you fail, you're broken. Okay, so you don't want to get down to three too quickly. So six is a good number, and multi as I said before, multiples of three are good as well. So six, nine, twelve are good. So I would go with units of six, and I would go with two command groups, one command group. 
um, organizing each of your two small retinues okay or rather not two small retinues um, two you know um, you can't really what, what's the division between retinue and unit I don't know yeah two small retinues within your one big retinue okay so what I've decided is basically I'm gonna have um, a minor commander within my retinue and this is this guy in the red but I'm also gonna have um, basically a, a person who commands a whole thousand points and that's going to be this guy um robert fitzwalter declare okay he's going to be my um overall commander so he's going to command the yellow retinue and that guy there is going to command the the um the red retinue okay so that's um that so these are nearly done now so these are all finished all right these are ready for the ready for battle these are ready for the tabletop um and all i need to add to these now are the two Knight command groups and I'll update you with those as well and then we're ready we're ready to play Baron's War I haven't added any mounted troops um, yet um, but um, I could add those later but they will take me well over um, a thousand points okay once I've added those all right so thanks for watching I hope you've uh, enjoyed a look at the uh, Baron's War range what there is so far and uh, yeah I'll catch up with you next time bye